Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Royce, and I am super excited to continue our new series on equations that change web handling forever. This show is about the most popular and the most useful web handling equation, and that is how to size the length and diameter of wound rows. I will also show you that there is a hidden complexity that you might need to consider for better predictions and for certain materials. No worries, kiddos. I'm going to make this as painless as possible. The wound roll sizing equation is so simple to derive that all you need is grade school algebra. The trick is to see how to get started by noting that the cross-sectional area of the web, that is, length times thickness, is equal to the cross-sectional area of the wound roll. You can use this equation in several ways. You can predict diameter if you know length and thickness. Or you can predict length if you know diameter in thickness. Alternatively, if you knew the wound roll's diameter and length, you could calculate a special type of thickness that we will use later. So, what could be simpler? Because we know how to measure diameter. In order of increasing accuracy, you could put a tape measure across the face of the wound roll. Better yet, you could use a pie tape around the circumference of the roll, though setting up for that measurement could take more time. Even better yet, you can use any winder that is equipped with a lay-on roller and a lay-on roller position sensor. We also know how to measure length in order to of increasing accuracy, you could measure length on the floor, provided that the length was not impractically long. Faster, but maybe no more accurate, is to use a footage wheel riding on the web. This is so super crude, I don't recommend it for almost any application. Finally, you could use the dual tachometer method that most modern winders employ. But, of course, life is not always so simple. An essential concept here is that there is no such thing as thickness that is independent of a specific measurement method and instrument. This is quite unlike, say, measuring the speed of light, where anyone anywhere in the universe using any legitimate method will get the same answer within the resolution of the method. Thickness is not like that. Uh, yes, there are many variabilities in sensor resolution and sampling, but that's not what my big concern is. Rather, different instruments use different probe loads and have different probe areas, and the size of the probe may be bigger or smaller than the sample. Worse yet, a stack thickness will measure different than a single ply thickness, and a wound roll effective thickness will be different still. The wound roll is even more complicated than web thickness as measured by a scanner or a test lab. Just as thickness varies with probe load, effective thickness in a wound roll varies with the tightness of the wind. Already a complicated set of physics. Also, pressure is different at the core versus the middle versus the top of the roll, thus the effect of thickness will vary at those locations. Also, low modulus materials, such as non-wovens of tissue, will compress more and thus act thinner when compared to high modulus materials, such as 
paper, film, and foil. Even the stack has complications, both as a test lab or a wound roll. If you compare stack thickness with single ply thickness, you will find that the stack has greater thickness with smooth materials due to the inevitable sandwiching of air between the layers. In contrast, the stack thickness of fuzzy materials will be less than single ply due to nesting. You can increase the resolution of your predictions of diameter or length. The easiest way is to use stack thickness measured in a test lab. Still, we can improve on stack thickness by finding the effective thickness in a wound roll. We do this first by measuring the length and the diameter of a reference wound roll and using that effective thickness to predict other wound rolls. Beware, however, that this is only useful if the grade is the same and that both the web thickness and the winding tightness are similar between the reference roll and the one you want to make a prediction on. And, of course, we have an app for that. The Wound Roll Sizer is the most popular of the free and easy Abbott apps. It not only sizes length and diameter, it forces you to consider the thickness compensation factor that is needed for smooth and fuzzy materials alike. In this example, it is set to 1, but it might vary from as little as 0.5 for an extremely tight non-woven roll to as much as 1.5 for a very loose roll of thin film. Finally, it calculates many other useful parameters like basis weight and density, as well as rotational inertia that is needed for unwind and winder drives. I hope you've been inspired by the beguiling utility of the wound roll sizing equation. Stay tuned for next week's show when we will give an example of equations that you will never directly use, but what they tell us is applicable to anyone working around winders and wound rolls. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Also, be sure to check out the show notes for bonus and surprise material. See you next time.